Hi everybody, I'm Rob Craig and I'm a faculty member on the speech communications uh, faculty here at Central Piedmont and the purpose of this video is to teach you a little bit about a secure digital disk or as we like to call them the SD disk and why we're asking you to use them this semester and a few things like buying tips and, and which one to buy and, and maybe some ways to get a hold of it other than buying it then of course when you actually have the card in hand and your instructor records your work onto it we've got a couple of videos that will also teach you how to actually load it into your computer and then once it's loaded into the computer how you can view it so let's get started with the basics a uh, secure digital disk is nothing more than recordable media now that's a fancy name but what it means is it's something that you can record on uh, for many years now, uh, about the time since most of you were in diapers, we've been recording on videotapes like this, a standard VHS cassette. But something happened. Um, technology passed us by. Uh, not only do many of you no longer have VCRs in your homes, but our equipment doesn't really work anymore and it's expensive to replace and the quality of the equipment that we get to replace it isn't very good. So we had to look at something new and the most current technology is of course digital technology which makes use of computers or at least computerized technology so that brought us to the SD disk. Now I won't bore you with any more details but uh, I think you're going to find that it's very easy to use and if you just use a little creativity you can acquire one and not spend too much money so let's take a few minutes and talk about some of the specifics about the SD disk. Um. The secure digital card overview is simply going to tell you what kind of card you need, and um, really in terms of size primarily. And once you have it, you know uh, where you can or how you go about reading it in the computer. Um, it's also going to tell you the cards that you can't use. So let's get right to it and try to knock this thing out in about five minutes. First off, which SD card do you need? Well, the brand itself does not matter. It honestly doesn't. However, the size or the size as we refer to how much storage uh, or how much data it will store on it. That's the size we're talking about. That's really important. And what you're looking for is a card that is 256 megabytes in size or bigger. Uh, and on the card, if you have it in front of you, uh, if it says, it will say something like 256 MB or it might say 1 or 2 GB. And we'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, there are 1,000 megabytes and 1 gigabyte, so a 2 gigabyte card holds 10 times as much as a 256 megabyte card. So if you're fortunate enough to have a 1 gigabyte or a 2 gigabyte card, you are ready to go. If you have megabyte cards, they need to be 256 or 512. Uh, make sure that you definitely have an SD card. Now, they are about the size of a postage stamp and they generally have this logo that you see coming up on the screen on the card somewhere. Now some of the older cards do not, however chances are if you have one of those it's not going to be big enough anyway. Now you will see out there when you go shopping or you go perusing through your family's old digital cameras uh, XD cards. They are different than SD cards. They will not work. As a matter of fact any other card other than SD which stands for Secure Digital those cards will not work. Now these sizes work. We've got a 2 gigabyte there. Clearly that's going to work. A 256 megabyte, and as we learned from uh, the previous slide, 256 megabyte cards, well, there's about 10 of them inside of one 2 gigabyte card. So if you have a gigabyte card, you're fine, whether it's one or two. Uh, and we've got those pictured there. And then lastly, if you have a 512 megabyte card, it's going to be perfectly fine. You say, well, I've got a megabyte card, but they're smaller. Will they still work? Well, unfortunately, if you have a 128 megabyte card, it will not work. While we could get a very brief, say, five minute presentation on there, anything larger will not work. If your instructors tape question and answer sessions, it will not work. So we've made the decision, we're just going to set the minimum at 256. A 64 megabyte card, clearly if a 128 megabyte card will not work, a 64 megabyte card will not work. So we're going to strike out with both of those and move on to the next slide. These formats will not work. You see uh, in the upper left hand corner compact flash card. It will not work, it's too big. Um, it's about the size of three or four postage stamps. A MMC, which is short for multimedia card, will not work. 
even though it's similar in size to the secure digital card. We don't see many of these around, so I'm not too worried about the confusion um, in Europe more than anything uh, and some off-brand cameras. Uh, but for the most part, don't see them. But uh, if it says MMC or multimedia card, it's not going to work. In the lower right-hand corner, you see the Sony memory stick, which is a special type of uh, memory that works only with Sony video cameras and Sony digital cameras. It will not work in our cameras. They are Panasonic. And then lastly, in the lower left-hand corner, you see the XD disc that are referred to in the previous slide. XD discs will not work. They're actually a different shape, uh, and they're actually actually a little bit smaller than an SD disc. Fortunately, in most places, they're merchandised together. So whether it is an SD disc or an XD disc you have in your hand, you'll be able to compare one to the other if you're shopping in Radio Shack or Walmart or Target or what have you. Now, one of the things that uh, we're going to get the big old red band bar up. Before I get into the readers, I just want to take a second to tell you the best way to get a hold of these cards is actually to try to find someone in your family who might have one from an old digital camera. If you can't get a hold of that and you can't use the one in your own digital camera, I highly recommend going to online outlets for the best price unless you can run down a sale. Now, when you're looking for places to, um, you know, to find these on sale, uh, typically Walmart and Target, when they're on sale, you can get a good deal. When they're not on sale, they're among the highest priced stores in which to buy these. If you want to walk in, not have to worry about a sale, go to Radio Shack. As far as my experience goes, that's the very best place. Now, once you have your card, you've got to be able to, to let your computer read it. And in most cases, whether you're in a student lab or whether you are at home or at your boyfriend or girlfriend's house, uh, you're going to have to be able to have a reader for your SD card. Now, there's two types. There's a multi-card reader, which you see has four slots. Some of them have five. Some of the older ones had, it seems like, dozens. But in most cases, what's left now are one that have four or five. One of those, in this case, the lower right-hand slot, would fit an SD card. Now, what most people use is called a single card reader, which is kind of misleading because actually these will read more than one card too. But what we're most interested in, and you can see right out there in the graphic, is the secure digital card. And you slip it in there, you put the cap on the back, then you take the cap off the front and slip it into a USB slot on your computer. Now, we've got further video instruction on doing that in other tutorials on this very website. So